everyone and greetings from day number two in Charleston. If you are new here, my name is Jessica Jolio. I am on holiday in Charleston with my parents for my mom's birthday and we are about to do a massive day of sightseeing, seeing all the greatest things in Charleston. So if that sounds good to you, off we go. We started out our day with a long walk down King Street, but that was not our final destination. Our final destination was the Battery, which is a neighborhood located south of Broad Street. However, as I did actually cover a lot more on King Street in my last video, but if you didn't watch it, King Street is an absolute must visit when coming to Charleston. It's where so many great shops and restaurants are, so it's a really lovely place where you can pop in and out of amazingly air-conditioned stores. And trust me, if you're coming in the summer, you're gonna love that. Um, it was super hot and humid. We're here on June 8th and 82 degrees, but oh my gosh, with the humidity, you definitely like a bit of air conditioning here and there to break up your day. But we made our way through King Street, making note of some stores we wanted to stop into later in the day because we wanted to do all of our walking along the battery before it got too hot. Our first stop was the famous Pineapple Fountain. And I highly recommend that you visit this. For those not familiar, the pineapple is famous in Southern culture. Uh, back in the olden days, apparently having a pineapple was a sign of wealth because they were quite hard to come by, very expensive, and now in modern days, the pineapple is kind of a symbol of Southern hospitality and a Southern welcome. It's definitely lovely to go visit the pineapple fountain. You actually can kick off your shoes and go wade through it, which is pretty cool. After enjoying the park and the pineapple fountain, we made our way to one of Charleston's most photographed sites, which is called Rainbow Row. Now, Rainbow Row is, it refers to 13 pastel colored historic homes which are located on East Bay Street in the Battery. And it's one of those historic sites. We saw multiple tour groups there. And you know, an interesting fun fact about Rainbow Row is that the, the homes that you see that are in all these gorgeous colors were not always in these different shades. Apparently, after the Civil War, this area was very run down and actually considered to be a slum. However, this changed in 1931 when Dorothy Porcher Lege and her husband, Judge Lionel Lege, purchased the section of houses on East Bay Street, which we know today as Rainbow Row. And it was Dorothy who decided to paint the homes on this row a really pretty pastel pink as a way to make the area look nicer. This took on and now you can see tons and tons of beautifully colored homes all throughout the battery, which is lovely. And what's really great when you're over on Rainbow Row is in front of a lot of the homes, there are historic placards and you can read the history of each house. And you'll actually see this throughout kind of a lot of Charleston and especially the Battery neighborhood. So you can just kind of wander all the little streets and when you see a placard in front of the home, stop and take a minute to read it and then you can realize, okay, who owned the house, a little bit about their history and why this is significant to Charleston. After Rainbow Row, we decided that we needed to see more of the gorgeous homes of the Battery. and. There is a whole series kind of towards kind of the a specific tip of the battery. I'll leave some of the addresses in the description box below of these stately antebellum homes that are something out of like, um, just out of a movie. They're so stunning. And actually in my research, I realized when you look at them, you see these homes that have these sea views and you notice all the porches are on the side. And what I read is that they're on the side as a way to get the sea breezes coming through because obviously these were built far before air conditioning was a thing. Um, so the more you know, but one of the great things to do in the battery is really just to wander around. And especially with these homes, you just kind of, you see a street that looks charming, just take a walk down it. Chances are you're gonna see kind of, if you like seeing 
old houses and beautiful architecture, this is the neighborhood for you. So especially with these old antebellum houses, a lot of them are kind of um, in like a little L shape around the water right before the park at the southernmost tip of the battery. So definitely check them out and I'm gonna put a bunch of them on screen right now. So one more thing before we move on to the next thing. So speaking of those gorgeous old southern antebellum style houses, there are um, quite a few of them. I think probably like I saw like four that you can go and actually tour. They're now kind of turned into museums and two of them especially caught my eye. We didn't have time to do this today, but I think if you were in Charleston on a rainy day, this would be a fantastic activity to do. So I'm gonna share them with you right now. I'm just reading on my phone, forgive me. Uh, the Nathaniel Russell House and the Edmonds, Ed, Ed, Edmonston, Alston House and specifically with the Edmonston Alston House you can apparently purchase combo tickets with Middleton Place which is one of the plantation houses to also go see. So after enjoying kind of the antebellum houses we made our way to the park that is on the southernmost tip of the battery. The park we went to is called White Point Garden. It's also the place where Oyster Point is and it's just a lovely garden. There's apparently all this like kind of bird wildlife there. We could hear kind of all the sounds and they had these old historic kind of cannons there which my dad was taking some pictures with. So definitely take a stroll through it and check that out. Then after that, we decided let's just wander some of the little streets in the Battery. One of the really cool things to do in Charleston in general, and especially the Battery, is to go kind of just see all the homes, enjoy the gorgeous streets, take lots of pictures. I personally love architecture, I love doors, I love ivy covered buildings, so I was just in my element documenting. But another cool thing is in Charleston, there's all these amazing alleyways and specifically in the Battery, I'm gonna pull up a few that you should check out um, and I'll leave them all linked down below. So we went and checked out uh, Zigzag Alley, which is kind of tiny and I, I wouldn't say you necessarily need to do that one to be honest. Stoll's Alley is really lovely and definitely a great one to do. Um, and then also Longitude Lane is also quite cool, which is right around the corner from Rainbow Row. So we'll make sure we intersperse some of these here. So then after a lot of walking, actually 3.3 miles to be exact, but who's counting, we decided that we needed some air conditioning, a cold beverage, and maybe something to eat. There's this great kind of all day breakfast place that was recommended by a friend, which is really on kind of the the very first part of King Street where restaurants start because King Street actually runs all the way through um, kind of the historic part of Charleston but in the Battery it's all residential so one of the first streets if not the first I think 
is where Miller's All Day is. And Miller's All Day is on every best of Charleston list. And after visiting, I completely understand why. It's casual, it's not that expensive, but the food is great. So we walked in, um, I don't think they take bookings at all, but we walked in and just said, you know, what's the wait for three people for a table? And the woman goes, well, it's about a 35 minute wait for a table, or if you see a seat at the bar, just grab it. So my dad immediately took a beeline to the back bar area and he scored us three seats at the bar, which was great. So Miller's All Day does tons of great breakfast items. They also do all different kinds of specialty coffees. So if you love coffee and you like a specific kind of beverage, whether it's a cafe mocha, they do like a chai. Um, they also do a dirty chai, which has a shot of espresso in it. I opted for a cold brew with vanilla and milk. I love myself a bit of vanilla syrup in my coffee, so. Um, and I got this massive like vat of iced coffee and I was very happy with that. My mom had an iced tea, which she said was fantastic. And my dad had a Bloody Mary, which I didn't get a chance to capture. Um, and then he also had a cafe mocha at the end of the meal, both of which he said were really good. And then for my main, I decided to have some breakfast. I had two scrambled eggs with a biscuit, um, as well as hash browns and bacon. And every element on that plate was so good. The scrambled eggs were cooked to perfection. The bacon was just the amount of crispiness that I like. The hash browns were oh, sinfully good. I really wanted to have a biscuit while I was in Charleston and that was fantastic. And it came with, I was wondering what the sauce was on the plate and it was actually a mix of like butter and strawberry jam together. Don't knock it till you try it, it's actually amazing. And my parents decided to split a burger, but I happened to be in the bathroom when the food came out. They started eating it, rude. Um, so I'm not able to show you pictures of what their meal looked like, um, sadly, but they said it was so good. And then we decided that um, we we're still a little bit hungry after all of that food somehow. I think walking all those miles just did it for us. And we decided to have the banana bread, which has this Nutella cr like chocolate cream cheese on top. Sinful, so good, like having a piece of cake, but probably better. <laughs> So would highly, highly, highly recommend Miller's All Day. I think it, if you do have to wait in line, it's definitely worth the wait, but take that hot tip around. If you're okay with sitting at a bar seat, go for it. Now, after that, um, I realized that we hadn't really explored much in the French Quarter. We were so excited to go down to the Battery, but the French Quarter is also a wonderful area with so many great sights to see in Charleston. So after Miller's All Day, we decided that we wanted to go see the famous French Huguenot Church. Oh my gosh, it is stunningly beautiful, almost even more beautiful than the pictures online. Oh! So the French Huguenot Church is actually the only Huguenot Church in the United States and it's a Gothic Revival Church. It was built in 1844 and designed by architect Edward Brickle White and it is the oldest Gothic Revival Church in South Carolina and it has been designated a National Historic landmark listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, the congregation actually traces its origins to the 1680s. Basically, the backstory goes, as a Protestants in predominantly Catholic France, the Huguenots faced persecution in the 16th and 17th centuries, and following the uh, what is it, revocation of the Edict of Nantes in 1685, many Huguenots fled France for various parts of the world, including Charleston. And apparently the early delegation of Charleston's Huguenot Church actually included many of these refugees and 
their descendants continued to play a major role in the church's affairs for decades. Apparently today, the church's services still follow kind of the traditional 18th century, um, I guess, kind of process that you'd have the church services in, but they are held in English and not in French. Now, when you come out to see the French Huguenot Church, also make sure to look a little bit down the street and you're going to see St. Philip's Church. And this is also a historic church in Charleston. It was built in 1836. The spire was actually completed in 1850 though. Apparently, uh, St. Philip's Church is the oldest European American religious congregation in South Carolina. And it is also now a kind of historically significant building in Charleston. After taking a look at the churches, we wandered over to Philadelphia Alley, which is another one of those kind of historic hidden alleys that you need to go check out if in Charleston. This one I think was our favorite of the day. It's so beautiful on the inside, but it also has an interesting past. If memory serves, I believe this is the alley where people used to have gun duels in the past. So if you've ever heard of this, where you walk three paces, turn around, count to three and shoot, something like that, I am not a duels, dueling expert apparently, but I guess this was the alley that this used to happen in because it's apparently not far from the courthouse. Also nearby to Philadelphia Alley is the famous Pink House of Charleston. This house is known as actually one of the oldest houses in Charleston, and honestly, I felt like it was a bit of a letdown just because it felt really run down when I went to go see it. But the house uh, is was reportedly built between 1694 and 1712, and it was built by John Breton, apparently scandal, the building, the date of the building has been subject to dispute. Two local historians fix the date as 1712, but dates as late as 1745 have been suggested. This is one of the places that appears on every kind of best of must see guide in Charleston, but I have to say I enjoyed really strolling through the Battery, Rainbow Row, and really just wandering through all the little side streets. Although a lot of guides do say strolling through Chalmers Street is a great thing to do, and we didn't have enough time to do that today, but I would recommend that you do that as well. Another incredibly important site to see on Chalmers Street is the Old Slave Mart. Now this, Charleston has a very tough to process history around the slave trade and apparently the Old Slave Mart, which is located at 6 Chalmers Street, once housed an antebellum slave auction gallery. It was constructed in 1859 and it was believed to be the last slave auction facility in South Carolina. The market was established later in 1856. This was done after a citywide ban on public slave auctions. So basically, instead of being able to auction slaves off on the street, they had to do it privately in a building, which is why this old slave mart was created. Really hard to process, right? But I think also important to process. We have to recognize kind of not just the kind of beautiful buildings and kind of the lovely side of Charleston, but we also need to dig into the significance of the history. And unfortunately, we didn't have time to go in and do this today, but it's absolutely something I would like to do before the end of our visit to really go in and understand this side of Charleston's history. For, with the old slave mart, slave auctions were held until approximately 1863, and in 1865, the Union Army occupied Charleston and closed the Old Slave Mart. And today it is now a museum and one that I would highly recommend that you go check out. Another spot that we visited while in Charleston was the historic Charleston City Market. This market spreads out over four city blocks. It's indoors. Parts of it are air conditioned, parts of it are not, but it is a 200 years old market. And today it's home to all different kinds of local artisans. So you can buy everything from like t-shirts to tea towels, beautiful works of art, um, face masks. There's so many different wonderful treasures to find in this market. We actually uh, walked through it earlier in the day on our kind of way over to the French Quarter and the Battery. And this is a great way to kind of explore it, but it's also a great place to stop into if you need a little air conditioning break, um, as you might in the summer. But 
my mom ended up purchasing a piece of art about Rainbow Row for her house as well as a beautiful magnet. So there are some lovely treasures to be found. After walking about six miles and over 12,000 steps, we needed another break and some air conditioning and maybe a cocktail. So we decided to go check out a rooftop bar which has both indoor and outdoor sections. It's called the Watch Rooftop Bar and it's in a hotel. It's actually across the street from Basic Kitchen where we had dinner the other night. I'll leave my first night video on, our first day video in Charleston linked down below if you wanna check that out. And we had mixed opinions on this one. They did have a great cocktail menu. I had a Moscow Mule. I was really happy with it. My mom did not like the iced tea. Uh, she said it was not anywhere near as good as Miller's all day and my dad had a cocktail which he he just kind of self-made a cocktail which he thought was not so great but after talking more to the bar staff we started to learn all of the steps and things that they do to kind of make the drinks that are on their cocktail menu so I would still recommend this place but I think learn from our mistake where order something off the cocktail menu if you love cocktails. If not, I would say opt for beer and wine, but we thought the food coming out of the kitchen looked really good. It's your classic kind of bar food, think burgers, tacos, amazing like masses of french fries that, oh, if I wasn't so full from our lunch, I would have wanted. But I think we would definitely come back and try the food and give it a second chance. So. That would be my tip on that one. Next up, we are off to dinner. So it is my mom's birthday and we are gonna go to a place called Five Church. This is in the French Quarter. It's actually really near the Charleston City Market, right near the water. And it is a great restaurant, comes great reviews. So let's see what we think about it. And it's located in an old church. So off we go and we're back. So forgive this lighting here, it's probably not the best, but oh my gosh, tonight's dinner was incredible. You have to come to Five Church if you're in Charleston. I would say probably the most appropriate for like date night, special occasion. There even were some families with kids there, but I would probably say it's not as much a families with young kids restaurant, maybe like older kind of teenage kids who want up for more of a vibe, but it's located in an old historic church. It's apparently formerly a non-denominational church in Charleston, apparently the first ever, and the church I think was founded around 1916. And what's amazing is they've done such an impeccable renovation of the church. Apparently the vast majority of the stained glass is still intact and on the church ceiling, it is hand-painted Sung Su's The Art of War. Oh my gosh, I mean, somebody definitely really curated how this uh, amazing restaurant would be decorated. But let's talk about the atmosphere, let's talk about the food. How were they with celebrating a birthday? Well, atmosphere is fantastic. It's definitely lively, buzzing, everything from the bar seats to the high top tables to we sat in a really nice banquette seat. Um, it's just such a like lively, fun atmosphere. So definitely gets full marks from me on that. Now the food was great. So every review I read online said, try the sushi tots. So who am I to argue? I love sushi. I love a bit of fried things. And the sushi tots are essentially, um, yeah, yellowfin tuna with um, basically like fried rice balls underneath with this amazing seasoning on them really good and then my dad had um, a half dozen oysters and he opted for like half southern half northern so like half oysters from maine half oysters from south carolina so that was fun for him uh he really enjoyed kind of comparing and contrasting which ones he liked the best um and then for the mains, my mom and I both did the catch of the day which was a mahi mahi which was oh it had a um squid ink spatzel with uh, broccolini and this amazing sauce on it. It was perfectly cooked. We both loved it. And then my dad had the 
um, I think it was the hand braided ravioli. He really loved it. And then because it was my mom's birthday, they treated us to a free dessert. So it, we had, I had actually marked in the booking when I did it on open table, but it was funny because our server just heard us wishing my mom a happy birthday. We were doing cheers with our glasses as she came by and she goes, oh my gosh, well, you guys are absolutely getting a free dessert on the house for your mom's birthday. So that, we thought that was just so lovely and so sweet. And we ended up getting a, um, like a chocolate brownie uh, dessert, which I don't think I got any footage of because it was like lit with a candle. We were singing happy birthday. I'm not putting that on YouTube because uh, my mom would not like that. <laughs> but you can imagine it was lovely. So, um, and what I would say is service was impeccable. This is a big restaurant with a lot going on and every, she was, our server was just so warm and friendly, made us feel so special, so attentive. And, you know, she felt like it was a bit slow between our starter course and our main course and brought us like free hummus and, and chips, which we really didn't need. Um, but in contrast to the night before, which was a lot slower service, this was just everything I thought was so well-timed and lovely. So cannot recommend um, Five Church enough. And apparently right next door is more of a seafood heavy place. I think it's called uh, Temper. I'll put it all down below. I had not heard of this on any best of Charleston lists, but given how great the experience was at Five Church and I took a look at the interior of this other place and it looked amazing, I probably would have been tempted to book that for my mom's birthday because she loves seafood, but I had just not heard of it before. So I'm definitely going to check out the menu and I'll leave it linked down below if you want to check it out as well, especially if you can't get into Five Church. Um, definitely recommend making bookings ahead of time because it was jam packed the entire evening. And I think what I'm realizing is that Charleston is just such a city where you have to book everything. So plan your dinners. Book them, resi, open table, old fashioned calling, do it. All right guys, so with that said, that wraps up my day two in Charleston. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, I do have some more coming from Charleston. I've got two more days here, so probably another one to two videos in the queue. So please hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more. And then if you like this video, please hit that like button because that shows me what you like. Um, and then if you have been to Charleston, please leave a comment below. Would love to hear what your recommendations are because sharing is caring here on this channel. So thanks again, guys, and I will see you soon.